So just a very quick video to show you the uh, restoration or let's say servicing and calibration of this uh, Fluke 77 multimeter. Uh, it, uh, it's about, what's it, about 25 years old now. Uh, this meter, this Bryman, uh, it's the uh, BM867 has been recently calibrated so uh, I know that the uh, 3 volt that it's reading over there is, is correct. Uh, this meter has always been about three counts out, still well within its specifications, but uh, let's see if we can get it back to 100% uh, uh, calibration and maybe just uh, clean it up as well. The uh, switch is a bit crusty and uh, doesn't switch uh, so uh, very well anymore. So uh, yeah, let's have a look and see what we can see inside. Oh, and if you're wondering, the uh, little calibration circuit that I'm using is basically a 5 volt uh, uh, low wattage 5 volt regulator with a very simple voltage divider network and uh, I've tuned that exactly to 3 volts out output uh, as uh, read on the Bryman multimeter. Alright so this uh, Fluke 77 is about uh, 25 years old, dates from the late 80s early 90s. It was uh, one of the first multimeters to come out with a bar graph and the bar graph is actually updates quite quickly. It's uh, updates 32 times per second. It's a nice rugged little unit. Um, it's actually uh, smaller than, than you'd think. Uh, if we remove it from the holster, you'll see that uh, it's actually quite a, a, a compact unit. Um, the holster is, uh, offers good protection, but yes, on, on, the, on its own, the unit is, uh, you know, it's quite um, solid. Uh, you can see it's well built. It uh, doesn't, doesn't feel uh, too flimsy or anything like that. The selector switch is a little bit uh, crusty. It's uh, definitely not uh, working as it should. So uh, we'll see if we can add some lubrication. There's a lot of dust in the, uh, in the corners there, uh, but uh, we'll, we'll make sure to clean that up as well. The display is actually uh, quite easy and clear to read. Um, for the rest of the meter, it's uh, actually in fairly good condition. There's not really much uh, else that we can do. Uh, we'll have to do to it. Uh, let's quickly just take a look at the, the dirt buildup on the side here. So there you can see that's about uh, 25 years of, uh, of crud uh, just sitting there inside the selector switch. Um, on the inside, the selector switch is actually uh, fairly easy to pop out. Uh, we can um, Oh, we'll have a look when, when once we've opened up the meter just uh, how to do that and uh, uh, I can also then show you which uh, parts we're going to be lubricating. Right, so I think let's uh, open it up and uh, see what we can do to, uh, to restore her to her former glory. Okay, so in order to calibrate this meter uh, we need to obviously open it up um, but uh, we need to first set it to its DC volt setting. Doing that allows the selector switch on the inside to be uh, set to, the, to, well, first to power the meter on and to, to, to then set it to DC volts uh, and we'll be measuring 3, three volts DC. Uh, but uh, when we take it apart from when we take these screws out, the top of the case will come off along with the selector switch, right? So on the inside you want that selector switch to already be on the voltage selection and uh, you know let the meter be turned on so that you can just apply the uh, 3 volt uh, DC uh, calibration signal and uh, and then calibrate it using the internal calibration resistor okay so uh, let's quickly open it up and there we go Alright, so let's just quickly take a look at the insides of the multimeter here. Uh, obviously the display there, uh, here is the selector switch, currently set to DC volts and of course turning the meter on. Over here you've got R8, which is the calibration potentiometer. Uh, over here you've got a nice little can and inside the can there's the uh, thin film resistor network. Battery very nicely and secure on the inside of the meter there. You've got some input protection circuitry there. The, um, 10 amp shunt resistor, we'll have a closer look at that just now and of course the uh, HRC fuse and the 400 milliampere fuse. I replaced this a little while ago with the glass fuse but it, it, it had a ceramic fuse in, I just didn't have anything else uh, on hand. So here's the uh, current shunt uh, resistor that I was uh, pointing out earlier. Uh, you can see it's actually a four terminal device so uh, the current, the high current, the 10 amp uh, range 
flows through here and out there and then the measurements are taken over that and that pole and there's the thin film resistor divider network uh, unfortunately the actual network is on the other side uh, but that's uh, the heart of this multimeter uh, responsible for the stability and the accuracy now in order to remove the board from the base of the uh, enclosure you need to actually just remove this HRC fuse because underneath there's a little screw embedded okay so let's have a quick look in the, at just at the back of the board quickly uh, just undo this one little screw right you'll see it's uh, nicely spring loaded there's a little spring at the back there that just makes contact between the PCB and the uh, back shielding there we go that's the back of the board uh, two ASICs the, the you've got the uh, display control controller the LCD display controller here's the ASIC that uh, does all the multimeter measuring functionality and just two small little bodges that's all these uh, revision What's that? CAD 585 revision L. On the uh, back of the meter itself, a fair bit of shielding. There's the little piso uh, element for the buzzer and the little spring. Right. So I think we can uh, put back this, uh, this, this meter now, put it back together. Alright, so I've got my 3 volt signal plugged in here, uh, so let's uh, start tuning it quickly. There we go, easy as that. Uh, so uh, we should be all set in terms of the calibration. Now I think uh, we just need to clean up this uh, selector switch over here. Uh, so yeah, let me uh, grab my service hole and give you a little close-up of that action. Uh, if you wondered what I'm using, uh, Servisol, which is a really fantastic uh, contact cleaner. It's not uh, only alcohol based, obviously it has some alcohol in it, but it's also got liquids that remain on the contacts to prevent uh, additional oxidization and corrosion. So yes, this is really, really nice uh, contact cleaner. Uh, the, uh, the way to use it is to spray it on the contacts and then exercise them as well make the uh, contacts uh, move against each other really nice stuff get some and then just make sure to uh, exercise those contacts all done now in order to get this uh, selector switch out uh, we're basically just going to press against these bottom two little plastic clips like that keep them pressed and then just press on the third and the fourth one at the top and it just pops out like that very easy here's the selector switch with the touch hold button you can see it just presses through on the other side there just uh, makes contact onto the uh, little PC board
All right, then here's the winning stuff. Silicon paste. This is what I use to uh, lubricate the selector switch. And uh, if we just turn it over and have a look at the back here, you'll see that uh, it's actually specifically formulated for plastic to plastic, rubber to plastic, and metal to rubber. So uh, yeah, this is exactly what we need to lubricate that selector switch. So right, I'll just take a little bit of this uh, silicon paste and uh, put it on the indents on the inside of the where the selector switch would go and also right there where the rotation actually takes place. And I'll also put a little bit on the little bits of plastic that make contact with the actual indents. Let's speed this section up a bit. Okay, I'm also going to put some on the outside of this wheel there where obviously there's some uh, uh, friction going on there. So if I just get that also covered with the same stuff, we uh, should see uh, substantially less uh, friction between the, the selector switch and the uh, case of uh, plastic of the case. Just do the uh, outside of the wheel, the rim, and we should be all set. In order to remove the uh, glass display or the little plastic front end of this uh, meter, you'll see on the inside, and it's like the, it's the same on the 77 Series 4, uh, the little uh, front uh, glass element is wedged in there with a clip over there and another clip over there. Right. So all you basically have to do is just grab a hold of it, give this a slight bit of pressure. Right. Wait, hang on and it clips out like that. Okay. Now, this uh, little uh, element is actually in uh, fairly good condition. I'm not going to do too much to it, but uh, yeah, if you if you have one that's uh, in, in really bad condition, you can actually then take it out, give it a good polish, uh, typically with something like uh, a lens cleaner, something that they use for a vehicle uh, headlamp, uh, plastic headlamp uh, covers, things like that work really well and uh, yes then you can basically just clean them make sure you clean around the edges here that always helps gives an impression of a nice uh, clean uh, uh, multimeter display and then you can just pop them back Good as new. All right, so now that the uh, selector switch and the little indents are all nicely lubricated, uh, we can put back the selector switch. Just be very careful. Uh, you'll see over here, there's a little a plastic pin that's, that, that stands out uh, and, and here as well. Those are the, the limiting pins that uh, cause the selector switch not to be able to go further left than the off position. So just make very sure when you replace it that you replace it to the right of that little limiter bit of plastic. Right. And also, yeah, well let's first get it in. There we go. It just snaps back in place and then make sure that you remember to put it onto the uh, DC volt scale. Otherwise when you uh, assemble the meter and put it back together again uh, the the voltage or the uh, selector switch here won't match up with the selector switch on the inside of the meter and isn't it really nice to see these two fluke multimeters agreeing on the voltage that they're measuring fantastic That feels really, really nice. Nice and smooth, substantially better than it was before. Okay, what I always do is I dab a small amount of uh, that 
silicone grease or silicone paste on the front of each little screw before I replace it in the, ca in the case. It just helps with uh, getting the screws in and also finding the original thread. So that's something actually quite important. When you, when you uh, replace a little uh, self-tapper screw like this, give it an anti-clockwise turn until you hear a click. That means it's found the original thread and when you screw it in it'll screw in back into the original thread instead of trying to make a new thread further damaging the internal thread of the uh, of the case that will just uh, increase the lifetime of the case by orders of magnitude so yeah let's just do that again give it an anti-clockwise turn there's the click and then you oh, hang on there's the click and then you can very easily screw it in there's almost no resistance and there we go all done and ready for some measurement action so guys if you uh, like these kind of videos and you'd like to uh, see more of them please give this one a nice thumbs up and I'll continue making them thanks a lot